now I wrote to James Bill. Hope you're all well. Thanks for joining me. Well, I'm on top of the roof and you're on top of the comms mast. Um, and I'm here to really work out the final positionings for the solar panels. They're quite big. They're 1.8 meters by one meter. So obviously they're going to go that way on the boat. Um, they won't take up the full width, but they'll take up the lion's share of it. But from here, you can kind of get a sense of where that ridge is. If I put those brackets on the centre there, it's just it's just not going to work. It's, it's too high up um, where the ridge is going to be. The sides will be too too tough, flappy in a way. Um, the other thing is, obviously, there are two mushroom vents here at the front, so uh, obviously the panels have to sit proud of them, uh, sit above them, so obviously the air can still circulate underneath it. If they're in there, if they're sitting on those timber pallet type things, that will be fine as well as long as the air can get underneath to these mushroom vents. Um, but yeah, so I'm thinking one panel here, one panel here, and another panel here. So kind of three at the front, nothing at the back. Because that's where you're standing and that's where you're going to walk. Well, that's my logic anyway. Okay. Well, I can smell bacon cooking. Well, it's... um. Not the uh, crispiest of bacon, and it's not the um, most toasted of toast, but bacon's done, and the toast actually feels like toast. That's all right. One hundred and seventy-five at the back, so it's um, needs to be hotter to do bacon, clearly, but. It will work, it's only a bit of food. Saving on utensils. There we go. Well, I'm taking this opportunity to go and have a little wander around and really have a look at how other people have done their solar panels. As I said, there are a variety of ways of mounting them. And, um, yeah, I just really want to kind of show you and myself a few of the uh, most common options used. So um, obviously I've gone around the yard, but there's not a huge amount of people there with solar panels because most of them are plugged in. So they're not requiring them. So I'm having to go slightly further afield, which is nice, nice to get out of the boat for a bit. So this is one way of doing panels. These are rigid, so you can't move these. And they are obviously raised on both edges and just on this one here, because Paul's been able to do it. They've just been welded on these little brackets. So it sits kind of low down on the roof line there, but it's flat. So it's fine for the summer where you're gonna get low of sun directly above it, but in the winter, for me, that wouldn't really be a very workable solution. And this example here, you can see that the panels are fixed to wooden frames and the frames themselves take on the curve of the roof of the boat and those panels are rigid. The advantage of that is that the panels are nice and secure. The disadvantage of this is that they sit up quite high 
and in some navigations and some tunnels that would pose a problem and if they're fixed then there's nothing you can do about it so that's something to consider as well here's another setup where you've got brackets mounted to side rails but these side rails could be a piece of timber in fairness um, supported by two bits of alley boxing which as you can see has got a bolt in there and therefore take those bolts out and that could be raised right up so it kind of flips up that way this boat's got four large panels on it so obviously take solar very seriously um, the gap here is obviously for the center line uh, which is obviously something I'm going to have to consider because you don't want the rope to get caught under the panels, which is the other problem of just using those small brackets or those centre-mounted brackets is that it doesn't really give a huge amount of security if the wind or something picks up your centre line and moves it and flicks up one of your panels. The other thing to consider, and what they've done on this boat, is they've put the panels the cabling for the panels straight underneath each one so you see there's no kind of run of cables between all the panels which again just helps the security of it but these ones here can be raised and here's a good example of what someone's done to deal with the exact problem I've got which is too much of a ridge so you'll see that bracket they've had made it looks like that's made out of 18 mil ply um, but you'll see the feet on it are angled down and it's got the gap there to accommodate the top of the ridge. So that's, that's a solution I could do. I could, uh, I could um, get something fabricated out of stainless steel. But again, I'm gonna need three pairs of them and getting something fabricated from stainless steel is gonna be fairly pricey. I guess I could go for mild steel and paint it, but I'd rather go for stainless. But that's quite a neat solution. I'm not going to have enough room for the panels. 
because there's not much gap between those mushroom beds. So really, they're going to have to go over the beds. The other issue is, I'm not sure how much air draft there is on that on this boat. That is the distance between the, like the top of the water and the top of the boat. Um, if they were to be mounted that way round, obviously in terms of space, that's a lot easier. Um, in terms of height, all I'd need is to support it in the middle, and these are high enough anyway. It doesn't interfere, I mean look, it's, it protrudes from the boat, there's no getting away from that. But it doesn't overhang the boat by any stretch, which is well within the gunnels. I would be concerned about tunnels, I certainly don't want it to hit the solar panels. I could have them on Lazy Susan joints, which obviously I've got a couple of them, so I could then mount it like that if I was to go through a tunnel. Kind of twist them a little bit, but then that's a bit of a hassle. I'm not going to want to do that any time. I don't think I like it overhanging because it's also it's not going to just be like that. It's going to be kind of up to about here, at the top of it. Firstly, that's the grab rail gone as well. So I think they're going to have to go lengthways. Here we go. I mean, the other thing I could do, now I'm looking at it, not the most attractive solution, but if I was to have one panel here, I'm just thinking about the mushroom vents and the height of everything. One panel here, in that space, one panel here and then maybe one panel on the starboard side of the stern it'd be a bit kind of mismatched which i mean it's not ideal but i guess in a way it's a little bit like the lights inside the boat you've got to position it how it works for the boat as opposed to how it might look from above, which, you know, quite frankly, who cares. I'm now thinking that might be the way to go. So, yeah, one here. And then I don't have to worry about the mushroom vents, and I don't have to worry about the height. So, one there. And actually, if we're, if, we're, if we're making these off centre, then what I can do is I can put that one on that side. Actually, no, I'll line these two up together. So I'll have that one like that, maybe. So at least it gives a walkway. So one there, well done. Next one. There, so I've still got that continuous walkway. Second one there, and then the third one. Kind of, kind of like 
like that. Just kind of there. And then one like that. Third one there. So there'll be a panel there. Bit of a squeeze. But yeah, that'll work. Panel one. Panel two. Panel three. And I can walk everywhere. Okay, now, if that's the case, no panels are being mounted in the center, in which case those Abra hits, those expensive ones, would work. They're not gonna have to take into account that angle. Um, I've gotta get some stuff fabricated. I've gotta get a couple of bits. So I might ask them how much it will cost to get these things made out of stainless and see if a fabricator can do it for less than a Chandler, which, I'm guessing that's probably going to be the case. But I think that is the positioning of the panels. So in that case, cables, that one will run into this one. Two of them will run into that one. So yeah, fair enough, just a little bit of conduit there. I can secure that down into that one and then into a skin fitting down there and into the stern. That's fine, that works, that works. And then when I take down the mast, that will just lay down there. Obviously I've got to trim it a little bit so it doesn't go anywhere near the chimney. Mm. Oops. Okay. So yeah, I want to clean this roof up. That's going to be uh, a job to do before the panels. Um, holes, obviously, for the cables to go through. I'm going to link the panels together, so going through will only be two cables, positive and a negative, into the charger unit. Right, I'll see how that works. Hopefully the mic picked all that up as well. Well, this has turned out to be a bit of a uh, two-parter and the reasons for that you'll probably find out in tomorrow's second part of this video. Um, but in the meantime, I'd really be keen to get some feedback on where you think the position of those panels should be. Um, the main concern for me is the height of them, so I'm happy to go above the mushroom vents and have them all in the centre, but only if the uh, the height would allow through the tunnels so i'd get yeah i'd be keen to kind of hear what your thoughts are on that but uh yeah the next uh, installment will be along shortly well tomorrow kind of afternoon until then hope you guys are very well look after yourselves take care bye bye